Oh, fuck you. Oh, this is your one! <laughs> <laughs> How much does that cost, Noah? I haven't decided it's yet. It's Riesling! It's Riesling! <laughs> Alright, we're doing it again. Back at it with another edition of Blind Wine Tasting. You know the drill. We purchase all of the wines from Sometimes Always. If you want a discount on any of the wines we try today, hit our Discord channel and you can get 10% off. But let's not beat around the bush. Let's get into trying some wine. More week, more wine, let's go. Um, wine number one, looks like we're dealing with reds, I hope. Uh... All right, let's do this, I'm ready. Rich little red number to kick us off, I reckon. Ooh, they're super juicy, like really bright, like plummy, fruity. Almost like a little bit smoky. I don't know if that's a uh, good note, like I said. This has this Merlot West, you know, it's a, it's a Merlot Cabernet Franc, um, you know, Cabernet greenness, stemminess. Cool, we gotta bring it back, bring it back, absolutely. It's got like that kind of middle, punchy, juicy black fruit. It's just like blackberries having a go, plums having a go. It's like, it's it's really good core of fruit. I would happily drop about 30 bucks. I probably wouldn't go that hard on it. I'm not too sure that this is actually uh, like a lot of handling and a lot of elevage. I think this is been like just a, a bit of a fun fruity thing and I'm gonna roll with like I'm gonna roll with six bottles the more I drink it the more I like it actually it's not very um it's complex but not abrasive like there's a lot going on but it's not like annoyingly challenging to drink I guess one number two this looks like a much lighter red a much lighter red I think this is gonna be soft Fruity, maybe a little bit acidic. Uh, either a very, very light red or a very, very dark rosé. Uh, I'm not too sure which, but a bit funky. It's got, it smells like bacon. Kind of smells like bacon. It's very familiar. Not, it doesn't taste like horse shit. Um, yeah, interesting. That's cool. It has this really interesting lanolin type uh, savory aroma. It's not overpowering. It's actually really dainty, very delicate. Chug a lug is really what you want to say about this. It's got this really nice, sour, red berry acidity to it. You can chill this down and just absolutely monster it, to be honest. Pinot Noir, uh, I think it's relatively cheap, probably 30-ish bucks a bottle. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is, don't really care. Um, it's a textural-ish rosé and I really, really like it. Number three. Hazy little number. Yeah, so stone fruity. Kind of like almost Italian-ish. Sticky citrus, like rich. Uh, kind of like your Nan's lemon meringue tart almost. Like the sweetness behind it. Wow. Uh, definitely an aromatic variety of some sort. Could be musket. Could be uh, like Riesling. Could be Gewürz Tramina. Uh, could be that, that sort of world of, of aromatic varieties. Bit of malo here as well. A nice little bit of creamy texture, but it's got this really cool rustic grip to it as well, so it's probably had a little bit of skin contact. Oh yeah, lifted, lifted, absolutely. There is like an orange marmalade thing going on, uh, as well as all the lovely white florals and you know things that you get with those aromatic varieties. But um, just to smell this, that orange marmalade just provides a slight amount of savory sort of edge to the more overt sort of rose petal, white petal thing going on. Um, salty, really nice and salty. It's great. I actually really think this wine is delicious. Really entry level cruise through orange wines with a little bit more wine making to it to make it really, really tasty. And uh, I'd be happy to pay probably around $35 for that. So, yum. Wine number four, and we're going white wine, crystal clear, brilliant, clarity. Um, it's looking, looking the good. I don't know, if I get any closer to it, I'm gonna be snorting it, which isn't gonna look good on camera. Um, that is a really fine wine. Delicate, crisp, clean, goes down super smooth, super easily. I've got very, I'm gonna take a stab and say it's a really well made Pinot Grigio. Tell you what, it's definitely interesting, it's definitely complex, but I'm just trying to find out how much I like it. I know I like it, but I just wanna know how much I like it. Mm, that is, um, that's got some acid uh, in a really, really good way. I think it's going to be a slightly more expensive Pinot Gris just because it does taste really, it, it tastes really deliberate and really crafted and really, like they've taken a lot of time to get it to taste. 35 a bottle, and I'd like a dozen of that one. Uh, it is a drinking wine, that is for absolute certain. Numero five, violet, purple, red currant thing. 
Like, it smells like tree sap, like that stickiness to wood or something like that. Yep, this is my bag. I'm into this. A lot of hinting at Slovenian oak use, which is quite distinct from French oak or American oak. It really has these blue fruits uh, really locked up in it. Grabs your mouth. Um, a complete contrast to wine number two, the little soft red that we had that was really light, really not much mouthfeel to it. This is really like, oh my God, it just grabs your tongue. There's so much grip and tannin to it. Could be made in Australia though, because it's got this new world lower acidity to it. Really great Nebbiolo structure to it. Mid-tier, Lange Rosso, Lange Blend, and um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it for what it is. Um, I think it's not that bad. I'd probably go for around about $36. And it's developed some more like interest and kind of tobacco-y, like really leavy characters. Um, I still think this is quite young and I'd like to see it in a bit of time. But right now, I'm fucking loving it. That's for sure. Bit of fun and games for you. Go back to episode one and watch me try and spin wine around the glass. Like I'm doing full like these ones. But these days, look at that. That's just a perfect sort. I've been spending too much time with these nerds. Dark fruit. That is for sure. This is probably a rich one. It's definitely got some boost to it. <laughs> it's, it's like a whack turny. Yeah. Um, that. That is classic. Straight off, off the nose, we're talking density, weight, power extraction, and oak uh, is really driving this, and good classy use of oak. And I also think this has seen a little bit of aging as well because it's already giving me uh, a little of those developed, um, perhaps Shiraz-like characters. I reckon this is a really awesome new take on Cabernet. That is my gut feeling, it's my absolute gut feeling. It's not perfectly Cabernet, but it's got this like green peppery thing that I reckon I reckon the other boys might be able to see this in better light because I think this is a really herbaceous character starting to develop. I'm dead. Okay, before anything else, I want 12. That's just good grape juice. I don't know what else to tell you, man. That's just some good grape drink right there. I'll have a heap of that. Uh, cross my fingers and toes and say, I uh, hate that phrase. I hate feet so much. It's cheap and go with $30 a bottle. Let's get the boys in and see what they think. Sweet! Uh, what did you guys think of these six wines overall? All of them were really good quality. I don't think there was anyone that I, I would actually go, there's something wrong with these. I don't know if I was thirsty, but like I was about this lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Numero uno. Numero uno. Medium weight, red thing. Yeah. yeah. Lucky, what do we got? Ooh. Oh, oh, right in the slot. This is, we're just getting so good. Don't bowl we're them there. So oh, good don't this. bowl them there. What have we got? What have we got? Oh, it's mayo. It's, it's Cabernet. Cabernet. Dude. Dude, Yara Cabernet. Good. The master it's... of wine. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is cool. Uh, so this Cold is, stream. so this is Mayer, who uh, I think this is like his entry level range called Bloody Hill. Uh, from best thinking. Bloody yep. hell. Bloody, Bloody hell, hell, mate. Bloody um, hell. Yeah, so he makes a whole bunch of really well-priced wines in this category. And then he's got another range, which is like in your 50 to $60 bracket that are all exceptional. But this is Cabernet. And Not your dad's Cabernet. No, oh, this, that's is, cool. this, nah. is, this is the new wave of Cabernet. You know what I think? It's really back. Uh, drinkable, but uh, still complex and uh, delicious at a wine. This next one. Bro, you all over it? Yeah, but I was like, is it true so? It, it, what do you reckon? It's some kind of early, ma like low maceration, like Tarvel style rosé. Split, split the difference. We'll split the difference. What is this? It's something it's like Rosso. Uh, Leza. Laser. Laser. Uh, Italian. Italian. Definitely not true, so. Yeah, no. Uh, Adley Clark. Foradori is from Foradori. Oh, cool. It must be an entry level little Foradori number. Those are Lombardo. Yeah. Um, this is tasty as. Never tried this before, and I am severely into it. Trolled ago. Uh, yeah, wow. Sick. I mean, she, uh, Elizabeth Foradori is famed for, for Trolldigo. This, I've never seen, I've never seen Trolldigo this light. Because Trolldigo is pretty, pretty extracted usually. Um, what do we got? Numero three. Skinzy something or other. Probably like totally. a Vermentino or something rather like that. Bit of malo, bit of creaminess, bit of nectarine, yada yada. I liked it. I, I had this sort of um, sort of maybe aromatic variety, musket, Riesling thing going on. The orange marmalade on the palate that just mm, sort of yeah. sharpened up the florals. Probably I wanted a little bit more acidity. That was where it sort of yeah, okay. lost it for me, but I can see it's not really the intention of that. Yeah, I said it was unfiltered and it was correct, lemony. Sir. And you are correct, sir. I know three white wine varieties and I went with Riesling. Could well be. Could well be. Could what well we be. What do we got, Lucky? What? It's free. It's free. free money. Oh, fuck you. Oh, this is your one. <laughs> <laughs> How much does that cost, Noah? I haven't decided it's yet. It's Riesling! It's Riesling! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, 
Oh, give us a look. All right, so Noah made a wine, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we bottled it the other week. And I, I didn't taste it because I knew that we were going to taste it on the show. <laughs> so I slipped to Lockie and said, oh, put this in the next blind wine. Let's well, let Noah talk shit about it. It's I quite would, nice. I would spend $32 on this and I went for, for uh, a solid three bottles. I said 25 and I wanted six, so you can price it at 27.50. Uh, it's kind you... of in the ballpark of where I, went. I, I said 35 and I thought it was Vermentino. Yeah, how many bottles did you want? Hey. Three. Hey. <laughs> I got, hey, bro, I got 600. I'm good. Uh, I'm actually about that. I think that's pretty fair. Pretty awesome. <laughs> it is. And it is, is my one. <laughs> Fuck. Finally! <laughs> got it. <in. laughs> All right, moving on what to number absolute <laughs> stitch up. Ah, got him. Piano. I reckon this number four was. I mean, pretty fair. Pretty fair. Had um a little bit more drive and acidity than uh, number three, but it just didn't have the unctuousness and texture. I couldn't smell a thing. Ah, uh, neither. It I smelled like Piano. Actually, yeah, no. Like I said it dry. smelled like Vegemite on toast. Yeah, yeah, yes. lazy. It's got, yeah. Oh my yeah. god, man, you're on it. Today. Yeah, no. It yeah. smells like really good, like wholemeal sourdough, mm. really good butter, and just the perfect amount of Vegemite. And for yeah. that reason, I got quite captivated by this wine, and I was like, give me half a dozen of that, I'm happy to pay about 40 bucks for it. Oh, I wanted a dozen of this. I Dope! I was, I was six, I was on six for 28. Guy. I do like some, I like some yeast, and $35 a bottle, I thought. Ooh. 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 All right, 20, 28 to 40. What do we got? Ooh, Bargain. Oh, yeah, give me Bargain. that. Give me that. 25. Yeah, Grish. Oh. Hey! Oh. It's one of Brendan's wines. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, good value at 25. <laughs> Call Fiano. Very, uh, and you called it. You called, I, he called Riesling, you called Fiano. Well, I'm good. yet to get one right. And I called Cabernet. Yeah, I know. I, We're all winners here. I know your wine better than I know my wine. What does that say about <laughs> fucking sales? <laughs> hey, trust me, anyone who comes up, I work in the bar where we do wine tastings on these. The fact that I had no idea what it is. Don't worry, just listen to me about <laughs> well, tasting those. I've, I got, exactly I've got my bets on that the next wine is Henry's. Oh uh, god, I will, dude, I hope so. That's why I that's... bought none of it. <laughs> I, bought, I bought half a dozen. Oh, look, you roll this oh, in. God. I didn't know what this wine was. Just wait till you watch this video. I talked this up so much in the tastings. <laughs> Number five, uh, yep. Absolute Nebbiolo. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, it threw me, to be honest. I definitely think you're in the right sort of area. Lucky, what is it? Oh, oh it is Neb. Right. Hey, there we go. Oh, oh that's my one. Sense. No, this is, is this is the yeah Alpine. Yeah, Alpine Nebbiolo. Uh, what's the region called, Brendan? Uh, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, they actually know what is Chivanesca there, which is the synonym for Nebbiolo, and it's it's just on the tip of my tongue. It's from Lombardi. Lombardi. Um, Nebbiolo, uh, Nebbiolo Rosola, Ros, Rosalina Rosa. So it's a blend of really obscure Lombardi indigenous varieties. I think you meant um, to say Alpi Retici Nebbiolo. Definitely explains <laughs> the high tannin. Definitely explains the really good acidity on that. Um, I would absolutely chug this for sure. I think this is delicious. The label well. looks like it was done by a kindergartner who's going to go on to great art. Welcome to natural wine. <laughs> Last one. Speaking of like a complete departure from this the first five. Banged. Of yeah, course it did. I, it banged for me too. I was I was about it. I, I went to six bottles. It held me back from 12. Just old school done really well. If um, <laughs> it's, I, I thought it was great. I had a dozen. I thought it was like a really cool version of Grenache or even Cabernet. I thought it was Grenache as well, man. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, yeah Grenache was in the Look past. Look shaking hands on camera with no <laughs> <laughs> Lachlan, what is it? I've pretty 50. close. We're all, we're, we're all in the ballpark. <laughs> oh, wow. No, this is old school. And this is, yeah, this is the perfect bridge for old school and quality. This yeah. is um, Kingswood Shiraz. Well done. This is... I whole... hate... I ev you know this. Everyone who's around me knows this. I fucking hate McLaren Bar Shiraz. This is awesome. Yeah, dude. yeah, he really does. Like, every time <laughs> I try to put a good one in front of him, he's like, nah, I'm not going to like it. Not from the third. I am stoked right now. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> How good. Um, yeah, Yangara, amazing vineyards. Uh, like, you know... Biodynamic, uh, biodynamic like organic, um, fantastic yeah. viticulture. Um, amazing winemaking, and this is all made in one big, large barrel. And is this no? Is yeah, it is the big barrel one. Sure. And fifty something as well. Very well done. Almost awesome lineup. Hey man, yeah. there's a couple in there that I'm a bit skeptical. <laughs> Sorry about the stitch up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>